Hey guys, so a few weeks ago I shot a roll of Cine Stills black and white double X film. If you're unaware of Cine Still as a company, they're based in LA and they take motion picture film and repurpose it for the use of um, still photography. So they have an 800 film that's balanced for tungsten light, um, a 50 speed film that's balanced for daylight, and then this black and white film that can be shot day or night. Double X is actually Kodak Eastman 5222 and then it's been um, re-spooled and renamed as Cine Still Double X. Um, it's been around since 1959 and apparently it's one of the film stocks, one of the only film stocks that's um, never been altered or changed. So I was really excited to get my hands on it and see what I could do with it. So I'm a huge film buff and this film stock has been used to film some of my um, favorite movies. Some of them you may have seen and you may also love. One of my favorite films is um, Manhattan uh, by Woody Allen. I'm a huge uh, Woody Allen fan. There isn't anything that he's done that I don't like. Manhattan was filmed in 1979. Um, it was deemed culturally significant by the United States Library of Congress, and I would have to agree. It's um, iconic and life-affirming. It will make you cry, make you laugh, um, yeah, it's a, it's a perfect film. It's a love letter to New York and it's also beautiful to look at to boot. So if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. Manhattan features superb performances by um, Woody Allen's constant muse throughout that time, Diane Keaton, and also features an appearance by Ernest Hemingway's granddaughter. Um, as Woody Allen's underage lover. Another favorite film of mine is Scorsese's 1980 film, Raging Bull. Um, it's a biopic on the boxer Jake LaMotto and his rise and fall in his um, career. It's a somewhat tragic film. Um, yeah, it's another classic pairing of Scorsese, De Niro and Joe Pesci, which, you know, always works, such a great formula. Um, it's beautiful looking, it's really iconic, and yeah, Scorsese is um, an amazing director. Um, I was doing some research earlier today on the film and I was reading that Scorsese um, originally filmed some footage of De Niro in the boxing ring on um, 8mm colour film and one of the crew members pointed out that his boxing gloves were the wrong colour for the era that Jake would have been fighting and he said, you know, they would have been like an ox blood kind of color or maybe even black. Um, and that prompted Scorsese to decide to um, make the film in black and white, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and also he wanted to sort of set his film aside from other films of the day, which in 1980 would have largely been shot in color. So yeah, I thought that was like a fun fact about Raging Bull that I didn't know that I wanted to share with you. The third film that I want to talk about before we get into the photos is um, Jim Jarmusch's Stranger Than Paradise. Um, I love Jarmusch. I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, he is what got me into so many cool things and he crosses over so many um, like mediums, like music and uh, like film and just culture in general. He's just a really cool guy. Um, so uh, this was Jarmusch's second um, feature following Permanent Vacation. And it stars uh, John Lurie, who is also a really great musician. He is also in Paris, Texas, which is another film that I've talked about on the channel. Um, he has a very, very small uh, scene in that film. And he did all the music for um, Stranger Than Paradise. I actually haven't seen this film in a really long time and I was watching some clips of it on YouTube earlier on and it just reminded me of yeah how amazing it is and how much I want to see it again. Um, it's all shot in really long um, like continuous takes um, and there's a lot of still shots as well like in between those that are like photographs basically so it'll definitely inspire you to get out and shoot some film especially um, black and white. So a fun fact that I found while I was um, researching this film, um, Jarmusch worked on a film of Wim Wenders who directed Paris, Texas um, early on in his uh, studying at um, film school. He was a PA to another director and yeah, he worked on this film Lightning Over Water, which Wim Wenders directed and he um, obviously got talking to Wenders and Apparently, Vim Vendors 
uh, gifted Jarmish some uh, black and white film stock, some of this Kodak Eastman film. And he used that to make the short for the film that would then turn into Stranger Than Paradise. And I didn't know that and I thought that was very cool. So apparently the um, roles of this film are now DX coded, but the role that I bought maybe a month or two ago um, isn't. So I loaded it into my F60, which I thought would, I would be able to manually set the um, ISO, but I loaded it up and I realized that I couldn't. And the default setting for my um, F60 is 800, which is kind of a weird ISO to be the default. And I was um, initially really concerned about this because, you know, it's an expensive film. You have to get it hand developed. And if I'm pushing it, I have to pay more. So I was like, oh no, I've completely ruined this film. It's not gonna look very good. But I was pleasantly surprised when I got it back because yeah, the results looked really um, quite stunning. And I think I would definitely be pushing this film in the future. So it's recommended that you shoot this film at 200 ISO in daylight. But um, when I was researching that, I looked on the website and it said that you can actually shoot it anywhere up to 1600, as long as you compensate in development, which is um, what I did. I got my film developed at a local lab on the Gold Coast here. Shout out to Pura Film Lab. Thank you for developing my film. Um, yeah, and I just paid the extra and got them to push it to um, 800. So I was really happy with the way that these came out. Um, overall, I would definitely opt for pushing this film. Um, anyway, let's get into some photos and have a look at them. I am gonna share all 35 photos with you. Um, I'm not gonna talk extensively about each one, obviously, but I just think it's really important that we share all of our work, um, not just the photos that we're really happy with. I think we pick out our best shots, obviously, post them on Instagram, um, you know, and that's great. But yeah, I wanna share the ones that I'm not so happy with and tell you why as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so we headed up to um, Bow Desert, which is like west of the Gold Coast, um, just for a little day trip um, for something different. I shot in landscape mode because I thought that that would suit my style of shooting because it's gonna opt for like a sort of um, broader like focal range. And I normally shoot at like F16 or F11 and like in uh, full daylight. And this was around sort of 10, 11 o'clock and it was a really bright sunny day. So I'm really happy with shooting in landscape. I think it worked really well. Um, last time when I shot Ektar on the F60 on auto, um, I got some kind of like unwanted bokeh and yeah, I didn't see any of this. Um, with this role. So yeah, I think it was a, a um, yeah, an interesting experiment and it turned out really well. So first photo, um, I, I do like this photo. Um, I, there's other ones on the role I like more, but yeah, I think like the, the shadows um, and the lines are really nice. When I'm shooting black and white, I'm looking for more kind of um, angles, shadows, lines, rather than like particular sort of subject, I suppose. This here was really cool. Um, I'm not actually sure uh, what it was, um, but I liked just the lines kind of coming down here. Um, I did this one in landscape. Normally I shoot most things in portrait, if you've noticed. Um, and surprise, surprise, I do like the portrait shot a lot better. So I was kind of standing on a wall um, here, so I was a bit like, oh, but, um, but yeah, I like this one a lot more. However, I, don't, I'm not in love with uh, all the sort of the trees at the top there. I think if there were like no trees and it was just sky and lots of like negative space and then this, it would look really good. But you know, what can you do? So we pulled over, there was this kind of like ex excavated like wall kind of thing here that um, I thought looked really interesting and I thought it would look good on black and white. Um, just the, all the textures um, in the wall there, like, yeah, I just think it looks really rich and yeah, really interesting. This one I'm a really big fan of. I think it looks really cinematic. <laughs> um, yeah, like I think it could be like one of the still shots or it looks like it could be one of the still shots in like Stranger Than Paradise or something like that. Kind of very like found object. This was like, I think, like the seat of like a car or something. Um, and then I found like more parts of it as I was walking along. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, here we go, there's more. I don't like this one as much as the other one, but 
Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting and I like my composition, how I've put it at the top there. I thought that this would look cool, like the puddling in the wet like sand and dirt, just again with those like yeah, really rich textures. This isn't something I would shoot um, on color really. Probably most of these photos I wouldn't shoot if I was shooting color. I'd be looking at completely different things, which I think is, is really cool. Um, again, this one's like kind of getting a little bit similar to like the other photos that I've shot. So I'm not like super impressed with it or anything. Um, I like to sort of move on from something, um, but because I was in a sort of more desolate area, there wasn't so much to just walk along and, oh, there's another building or there's this or there's that, like most of the places that I shoot on the Gold Coast. I really, really like this one. This is like one of my favorites. Um, yeah, I love getting really super close up to things. I'm like kind of obsessed with doing that. Um, yeah, and I just really like, yeah, the, the framing and the composition um, and then like all of the um, detail down here in like the bottom of the, like the puddle, how you can just see the leaves through the, the water. Um, yeah, I just think it's really nice. Um, this one I, I'm like unsure of. I shared it with a friend on um, Instagram actually, and I asked him for some constructive uh, like criticism and feedback of the photos because I don't normally shoot black and white. And yeah, he said that um, while it was like good, he felt kind of confused, like sort of leading you into something, but you know, what's it leading you to? And he thought it was a bit distracting with like the water and then like the trees and the pole. And yeah, I can kind of see what he's saying. Um, I'm not like in, in love with it. Um, yeah, I think there's some conflicting kind of things there. So I really love this one. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, again, the detail is so nice in all the plants like crawling up the wall. Um, and it was sort of at the back of a florist. So um, through this window here, you can see like all the tools that the florist is using, like the scissors and stuff like that. And yeah, the detail is just crazy. Um, I also like the white wall, like the high contrast, and I was gonna bring the exposure down when I was editing, but I left it up because I kind of like that blown out kind of look. I don't know how else to say it, but yeah. Same again with this one, and this one was literally just the wall next to that other wall. Um, just the lines are crazy. Like you've got like the pipe at the bottom and then just like the steps on the wall and like the cracks and everything. And then like the windows broken as well. Like the grass is cracked. It just yeah, I, I really like photos like this. Like these are the kind of photos that I want to take and I really um, am really happy with. This one was a like Freemasons uh, church. Um, and yeah, the whole uh, like perimeter of the building was really interesting. I also took some shots on the Mamiya of this and so did my partner. Um, yeah, just like really interesting um, lines. I'm not a huge fan of this one. However, I think the next one is a lot better. Um, I actually did take quite a few photos of this building too, just cause I thought it looked so good. Um, yeah, this one is really cool. Like the symmetry and then the trees on the, on the wall look really good. But, um, I think the next one is like the banger shot. Like I just love the, yeah, I love like the, um, the shadowing on the wall. Yeah, it looks kind of really eerie, especially like on black and white. This one I'm not in love with either. Uh, I was getting a little bit, I was using the Mimi as well as the F60 and yeah, I was just feeling a little bit kind of overwhelmed and I feel like my anxiety kind of took over and then I sort of just took a photo without really thinking about it and you can really tell. Um, I try to be really considered with every shot um, because I do take photos really regularly. So I've sort of, um, trained myself to be like that, which I think is a really good skill as a film photographer, because you don't want to be just like snapping away for everything. Next one, I I do like it. Um, I love a blind or like a curtain. Um, I just love like the way it falls and drapes. And I do like these trees, but I just think it's a bit messy. I don't like a messy photo. This one as well is super, super messy. You've got like the fence and then the leaves and the trees and there's like stuff behind the fence and it's just like, oh, it's just like, there's stuff everywhere and it's just a total mess. And I think it's also really boring as well. I have no idea why I took this photo. We stopped and I jumped out because I thought, you know, I'll be able to find something. Like there's always something to take a photo of. 
Um, and whilst I don't hate it or anything, I just, yeah, I just think it's kind of boring and I think the composition's a little off, like there's sort of too much in the foreground here, but I cropped it and it didn't look right and it was just, you know, sometimes you can't like salvage something, I guess. Again, this one, I liked the reflection in the water, um, but I do find when you're shooting uh, a lot of like greenery and it's really, really bright, like sunny, you know, midday does kind of just reflect off and tend to like get really like blown out, but in a bad way. I really like this one, the shadow of the um, power line and then like the road, like going out, kind of looks like two separate photos almost. I really like that. The, um, yeah, ubiquitous power line shot, which yeah, I wouldn't shoot normally like in color, but I just really liked like all the, the lines going everywhere and um, yeah, I just thought it would look good on black and white, so I did it. I had a couple of shots left over at the end and my partner took some portraits of me because we wanted to see how, um, yeah, how that looked on this film. Um, and yeah, they came out super nice. Um, this one's definitely the best one, I think. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really super, super striking. Um, he just got me at like, yeah, perfect moment. It's just out the back in our um, backyard and yeah, it just, it looks, looks really nice. And this one's really nice. It's, it's out of focus, but it's got like a real softness to it. And yeah, this one's really candid, just like looking up and um, yeah, I think my eyes like look really piercing. Um, yeah, again, he's just got me at a really good time. This one is, I feel like a little bit harsh on my face, like the, the, the lights and the lines and stuff. And I kind of look a bit like, uh, like puffy. So it's not so great, but um, it still is really um, like striking, like the, it's really contrasty. I like this one. Um, I wanted to lay on the ground, but it was all wet. So I laid on this bench, but yeah, I like the fact that he's come from like this side, um, creates a different perspective. And this one's really cool too. Uh, I like um, how like the, um, like the bokeh's up here. Um, my partner said he focused like on my hand and sort of did that on purpose. So this is another example of like how differently people can shoot. Um, like we're together all the time and we, we, we shoot together all the time and talk about photography and like make these videos together and, and we like a lot of the same stuff but we just have a completely different like shooting um, style. Yeah, this one I'm not like in love with either. Um, this was taken actually near our house. So um, yeah, I just, it's as I said, it's just sort of really messy. I find nature really hard to photograph in that way and I find that like things end up just looking the same. Um, this one's a bridge near our house and yeah, it's, um, I feel like it should be a good photo, but it's kind of blown out in the corner up here. And yeah, I just think my composition is kind of a bit ordinary for, for how much good stuff there is going on here and how much like depth there is. This one I really love because it's super, super close up and there's so much texture uh, in all the like sort of like running lines like on the, um, it's like underneath the bridge. Yeah, I love that. Like just, yeah, I love like kind of more abstract photos like this, I guess you'd call it. Uh, I love this one too. Like I love that really high contrast and this like silhouette and then like leading, like the light leading down. Love it. And this is the skate park. We took a similar photo on the um, X-T4, um, which is in another video if you wanna uh, have a look at that one. It's got like the Triax film simulation that we used. I think seeing these now, um, definitely you can't beat film. <laughs> um, like they're great and the Triax looked really cool, but like this particular film, like, yeah, it just looks so nice. It just, um, like the grain structure, when you zoom in, um, especially if you're pushing it to 800, like, yeah, it just looks really, really, really nice. Um, it's another really great one, like, yeah, just like this, the silhouette um, and the like stark contrast. This one, um, I feel could have come up a little bit, like composition's not, not, not that great. And I think the other photo was a lot better than this one. So like, why did I take this one? You know, you know, when you want the shot back, like I kind of feel like that. Um, and that's the end. So thank you for sticking around and um, going through all of those uh, photos with me. 
Um, like I said, I wanted to share all of them with you so you could get like a, a full picture of like the role that I got. I hope that inspires you to shoot some black and white, whatever that film stock may be, but if you can't afford it or um, if it's accessible to you, grab some uh, double X. I think it's definitely worth it. And um, yeah, give a go pushing it. I really, really liked the results. Um, I'd like to push it even more and see what I could do. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on videos. Um, we normally have something out every one or two weeks, um, a photo walk or a review or me talking about something that I love. So yeah, um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and um, comment with um, your favorite photo or what you think of Double uh, X as a film if you've used it before. Um, thank you so much guys. Um, take care, bye.